Hello and welcome to Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson and once again I'm joined by Kim Urbanowski. Hey everybody. Thanks for coming on set again. Thanks for asking me. <laughs> <laughs> Is the weather just been beautiful lately? Yes. Uh, come on. I know. What are you doing to take advantage of this beautiful weather? You know, we have a hammock in our yard right now. I haven't gotten in it yet, but um, it's been just kind of strung between the trees for the last couple days mm -hmm. and the kids get out there and hang out in that. Oh, that's but you know, I gotta get the back patio cleaned up. Maybe have a barbecue or something this weekend. I gotta warn you, once you lay down in that hammock, you'll be asleep <laughs> Done. In, for hours. That's it's not bad. Just awesome, fresh air. Right, Come on. I know. I know. <laughs> that's and I'm just watching the animals and the bees flying around. And I found a, a black squirrel in my mm -hmm. yard the other day. I thought those were only in Royal Oak. No, I, I saw one in downtown Lake Orion. He was a fat little guy. Yeah, Man. Like a little tiny guy, but. He needs some, uh, he, what's that? Uh, Ozempic. <laughs> Ozempic, that's it. That's what I was trying to call. He was a chubby little squirrel, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty busy. You know, the community's been really, really active uh, with yes. this nice weather arriving. There's so much to see and do. Uh, the highlight of my weekend was up in Novi, uh, the Motor City Comic Con returned mm -hmm. to Michigan. They do two events now, one in the spring and one in the uh, fall. And uh, the thing I enjoy most about it are celebrities. They have a lot of celebrities come to town. Yeah. William Shatner was there. Um, uh, all kinds. Uh, Karen Allen, who was in uh, Indiana Jones and Animal House and yeah. much other things, she was there. Um, it was a lot of fun and uh, a lot of costume uh, cosplayers, uh, vendors selling comics and toys. And oh, my that. friends were there with their cars. There's the Batmobile, the uh, Bluesmobile, and uh, oh, the from Dumb and Dumber. Mutt, <laughs> mutt cuts from Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, <laughs> imagine what went into making that. I know. Uh, Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters was at the oh, Comic Con, so, cool. so they had uh, Ghostbusters presence there. Uh, DeLorean uh, from Back, Back to the to Future. future. Uh, the cosplay Ooh, that's that cool. they do is just off the charts. What what people put into these costumes, it's really amazing. No. Uh, look at this guy in this tree costume. No way. It's really spectacular. It's, I had run into, um, Lee and I had gone to uh, downtown to, what's the, in the Renaissance uh, Center, the uh, Marriott, is it Marriott? Anyway, uh -huh. we had gone there for a weekend and accidentally were there at the same time as a con. Oh, yeah? It was hilarious. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that, so it was a nice surprise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a little glimpse of Heather Graham. I kind of swung my camera over quickly to get a shot of her. Oh. Um, the, uh, one of the highlights for me at the con was, and this is one of the main reasons I wanted to go, is uh, Norm and Cliff from Cheers uh, were at oh, the con. Yes. And so I got to meet both of them, and I brought a metal sign, Cheers sign, and got both of them to uh, sign it. And uh, gosh, I mean, Cheers was... For me, top 10 sitcom oh, yeah. all time. Me too. Uh, what a blast. And so they were both there together, so it was really cool to, to see both of them uh, at the Comic-Con. It was a lot so of fun. So did you eat uh, baked beans with George Went? What? <laughs> did you ever hear that joke before? No, no. Something about eating baked beans with George Went. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> I thought maybe you would know because, but. No, no. Okay. You'll tell me that after. The I know. I'll have to Google it. <laughs> so that was that was a lot of fun. And so they'll be coming back. I think they just announced the date was uh, early November is when uh, mm -hmm. the show returns to the, uh, the some, what do they call it? Somerset Collection up? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The mall? Up in Novi. No, up in Novi. What is that called? I forget. It, you, they keep changing the name, but they'll be back in Novi mm -hmm. in November. Um, another thing that took place over the weekend was uh, the Dragon Dash, mm -hmm. Orion Township Parks and Recs. Dragon Dash uh, came here to the Orion Center. Uh, beautiful wow. weather, perfect weather. Uh, 200 oh, runners and walkers signing up ahead of time. They said another 30 plus participants signed up the morning of. Uh, you could not ask for better weather for the uh, 5K. Uh, the course takes them out onto the Pollyann Trail. It was green and lush and scenic. Yeah. Uh, they had a water station. There's our leader right there, Alexander Pollock. Uh, he, this is the second year in a row that he took first place in the 5K. He's from Lake Orion. And that is Maria Brandon. Uh, she finished in 20 minutes, eight seconds to be the wow. first female to cross the finish line. Um, but it was a great turnout, beautiful day, 
and it's just really great seeing people out there on the Polly yeah. Ann Trail uh, taking advantage of what we have to offer in this community. Exactly. So for those who may not know, that used to be a railroad track, correct? And uh, it's really great that they converted the railroad tracks to these uh, trails. That sign was great. <laughs> <laughs> so the finish line was set up, uh, the start and finish line was set up right in front of uh, the Orient Center. And so I don't have to go too far. That's right. always nice for me. So very nice. really great event. And for the first time ever, I'm, I don't know if you're aware of this, this is the first time that the Dragon Dash raised money for a nonprofit organization. Usually the money just kind of goes back into Parks and Rec for other programs, but uh, Jen Vesna over at Parks and Rec told me that they raised money for Orient Area Youth Assistance. That's so amazing. Hopefully that'll be a new tradition yeah. to uh, oh, use sure. the, the funds raised to benefit a local organization. It's a lot of work, people. and kudos to Jen for putting all that together. And yeah, a lot of effort goes into it, but door. she was happy. She mm. was happy at the turnout. Yeah. Good. Now, about a week ago, uh, this just sort of popped up on my calendar. I went to go check it out. Uh, believe it or not, uh, Lake Orion's robotics team is mm. already recruiting for the next school yeah. year. Um, they're trying to get kids to sign up uh, at all grade levels. And so they had uh, their LO Robo Expo uh, at awesome. Lake Orion High School last week. And it was really cool to see. Um, like I said, they have robotics teams now at every grade level in Lake Orion schools. Yeah. And so they had all these displays set up where uh, they were demonstrating the robots that these kids yep. make. Yeah, that's the team that was just in front of the township last at our last board meeting. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we, we awarded them Citizen of the Month for... Oh. Uh, yeah, and then they did a little demonstration like that for us. It was pretty cool, that exact thing. I get a little jealous yeah. when uh, I see these kids because I didn't have these kind of opportunities when I was in right. high school. Our... I grew up in Hamtramck, went to Hamtramck High School, and our choices were very limited. We yeah. didn't even have drama, if you can believe it. Yeah. And so to see these kids having an opportunity to build robots and compete, uh, I'm really blown away right. by that. And uh, like I said, I'm a little jealous that I didn't <laughs> have those opportunities because that sure looks like a lot of fun. You know what the, the thing I think is the coolest about this, and, and again, you know, going back to like when we were in school, this kind of stuff wouldn't have been as like cool to do mm -hmm. and now it's really cool to do. <laughs> it is i think it's really interesting how um you know perspectives have shift what do you think about it this like kind of thing the kids that uh, play athletics that take part in athletics like mm -hmm. football and stuff they have a very slim chance of doing that as a career right but these kids in these robotics teams there's a very good chance that they're going to yeah. be able to turn this into a lucrative career uh, in engineering and design and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of real world applications oh, yeah. for this technology. So they're they're getting an early start on yeah. what they want to do for a living. It's pretty yeah. impressive. It's awesome. I, I, I love that the schools are supporting it. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that it's all grade levels now, that's really amazing. Right. Yeah. Now, of course, the big event that took place over the weekend, uh, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed over the weekend and uh, so much foot traffic. You, you gotta love to see downtown Lake Orion just bustling with mm -hmm. foot traffic, but a combination of the perfect weather and the Art Center's uh, Art and Flower Fair uh, brought people into downtown Lake Orion over the weekend. So our new intern, Lexi, uh, came along with me and uh, we spent a couple hours at the Flower Fair on Saturday. Let's take a look at the package that uh, we put together. On Saturday, May 18th, and Sunday, May 19th, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were filled with flowers, many forms of unique art, families, and activities to celebrate the return of the Art and Flower Fair. With over 100 vendors present, live music, artist demonstrations, crafts, and delicious treats available, shoppers had the chance to meet local artists and find something unique for their homes and gardens. The warm weather and fair skies made the weekend a record-breaking success and a great way for those attending to support the Orient Arts Center while enjoying what the community has to offer. 
Yeah, this is one of the, the biggest years. I think this beautiful weather, we were due for a good art and flower fair uh, weather weekend. So I definitely think the sunshine is bringing people out. Um, we've done a really good job with marketing and all of the vendors, we um, sent all of our marketing stuff out to them. So they've been sharing it and sharing it. And I think that has piqued a lot of interest in the area. And of course our partners with On TV and Orion Review have done such a great job um, marketing and advertising for us too. I think it's gonna be a really big weekend. Can you tell us about some of the flowers that you have here? We have two different kinds of flowers uh, on this side of the road and then on the other. All the flowers here, the pots, everything, all the proceeds go towards the Orion Art Center. These are from harvest time, so they bring them over here and then we get part of the proceeds and part of it goes to harvest time. But the ones on this side of the street all were donated to us and we get to keep the 100%. The Orient Art Center is in its fourth year hosting the event after taking it over from the Lake Orient DDA. But the Art and Flower Fair has been a staple in the downtown area for 24 years. The fair grows every year with proceeds allowing the Art Center opportunities to support artists of all ages with classes and other creative experiences. From paintings to vibrant flowers on every corner, and even one-of-a-kind yard art made from recycled materials, we talked to some of the artists that lined the streets of Flint and Broadway, sharing artwork while also telling the stories behind their pieces. Well, I take used and discarded tools, and I cut them up, bend them, weld them together to make yard art. My mom, I grew up with an artist for a mother and I was re gonna retire, uh, this was like three or four years ago, and my mother said, you need to do something, and she wanted me to do art, and so I knew how to weld. My father had taught me how to weld. So she just decided for me that I was going to start doing this yard art. Um, so I retired, and I've been making yard art. I have a shop that I in my home, and I every day, that's what I do. How do you feel about these community events? Well, I love the community events. I'd rather do a show like this in like a downtown area than any other. Um, the turnout seems to be pretty good. It's a steady flow of people, and we couldn't ask for better weather, you know, so, yeah. They're clay pot people, I call them. They're made out of terracotta pots. And um, everything's freehand painted. There's no stencils or anything. It's all freehand. So what does it mean to be here at this event today um, in Lake Orion? Um, great, I was so glad I could do this show. Um, I, I did it um, two other times before, and it's been a great show. Can you tell us a little bit about the art that you have here today? Yeah, for sure. It is mostly Michigan subject matter, and the reason I do it is people travel all over Michigan, love Michigan, especially Mackinac Island, and when I can capture the essence of what they experience on a vacation, they buy a piece, they hang it in their home, and every time they look at it, they have these fond, warm memories. And that, that's why I do it, because Michigan's a beautiful place to live. What do events like these mean to you as an artist? What it does for me is I get out and I get to relate to people of all different walks of life, which is amazing, because out of all the things I've created, all of these people have been created by the ultimate artists. So I am literally looking at masterpieces of the Almighty. Well, today has just been an amazing day. Between the weather, the art, and the flowers, it has been a record-breaking turnout. Thanks to the Orient Art Center, this is just a preview of what's to come August 23rd through the 25th with the Dragon on the Lake. For more information, you can check out orionartcenter.org. I'm Lexi McKinney here in downtown Lake Orion with ONTV News. So yeah, the beautiful weather brought people out to downtown Lake Orion. It was really great to see. Let's hope the great weather continues this weekend. Uh, it's Memorial Day weekend, yes. if you can believe it. And joining us now is Bob Smith, who is now the chair of the Orion Veterans Memorial. That's correct. Thanks for joining us. I know you got a full day of stuff going on on uh, Monday. Um, welcome and uh, tell us what's going to be happening uh, Monday Memorial Day. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I will speak about the uh, memorial services at uh, the Warrior Memorial Center on uh, or on uh, M24 and Heights Road. It, the service will start at uh, 1 o'clock. Uh, before that, we're going to have a parade, I believe, at 10 o'clock in the morning downtown. I think that's 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, yep. 
See, that's why I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, our, our program this year is, uh, it starts at 1 o'clock. We're going to have uh, Captain uh, Matt Butkus from the VFW Post 334 as our keynote speaker this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to bring up the fact that uh, I am now the chairman because uh, Dr. Doc, Dr. Joseph Master Mateo, who um, pretty much founded that oh, yeah. uh, memorial. And we wouldn't be there today if it wasn't for him, but he stepped down uh, beginning of the year, became chairman Aramis, Ar Emeritus. Emeritus. Emeritus, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so they asked me to step in. There's no way I could ever fill his shoes, but uh, he was a great man. He's a great man. He will be there to welcome everybody in too. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, I came out to this community in the mid 90s and we started our Lake Orion newscast. And I remember within the first year or so that I came out here uh, is when they had uh, the land swap where the Veterans Memorial got the land that they were going to build this beautiful monument on. And then almost every year there was something new. There was a groundbreaking and then they would add, you know, new things and, they, and it just kept growing and growing. And like you said, Dr. Master Mateo, he's the one who like sign, you know, sign the check on day one and he's been there ever since. And it's yeah. really amazing to see that memorial grow. And when, when things got tough going, he kept it going. Yeah. He, he fought and made sure that uh, things got done. And we've got one of the most beautiful memorials around. Yeah, it, it is. We it's, do. A, it's a great thing. We have people like Bob Watros who actually, if you look closely, you probably see him on his knees with a with the scissors trimming the grass and everything. <laughs> so. And a toothbrush yeah, yeah. Yeah. getting in between the bricks. Yeah. I, I don't know what if uh, if he ever retires. I don't know it's going to be, uh, but yeah. It's, it's a great uh, place to be. Yeah, I, I ran into Bob. Uh, he was selling uh, the poppies uh, for the VFW. He was at the memorial and people would stop and uh, he would uh, collect cash over there. And uh, so I got shot some video and I hung out and chatted with him. He's such a great guy. And you're right, he's right now, he's kind of the heart and soul of that memorial. He, he really keeps it up and uh, it's been really amazing to see. And the cool thing about the memorial is, it, I mean, obviously it's the, sp the center of everything on Memorial Day, but it's active throughout the year and Correct. there's yeah. events held throughout the year. There's the Patriots Day ceremony on 9-11 and, uh, and coffee with a veteran and so many things going on there. And sometimes when I'm just driving down the street there and I stop at the light, I turn and look and you see families there yes. just, Walking and looking, and maybe there's a brick with a family member's name on it, something like that. So yeah. that's how I originally got involved when I was with the fire department. Why 9/11 obviously yeah. hit, and uh, they asked me to to chair that, and that's how I originally got involved with them. And uh, that's two of the events that happened there that are very dear to my heart because of uh, symbolism of what they stand for you know these are people uh, first responders and uh, military people that uh, lost their lives protecting the rest of us yeah and uh, we wouldn't be here today in a free country if it hadn't have been something that these gentlemen and uh, or people men and women had not sacrificed their lives for yeah so, that's something yeah. that I think people tend to forget and you could back me up on this is you know, Veterans Day is the day to thank the veterans mm -hmm. who served and are still here. Mm -hmm. Memorial Day is primarily here to recognize those who didn't right. make it, right? Yeah, memorialize the ones who are no longer with us yeah. that we lost that way. Yeah, um, it's. I think sometimes, you know, people f get the two conflated, but um, either way, it's still um, a chance to reflect and think and think about the people that, you know. Um, yeah. Well, fought for it. it originally started as Decoration Day right after uh, the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And the reason they called it Decoration Day is the different villages and that, they would uh, put out flowers and that in remembrance of the, and it kept growing and growing. And uh, the, at one point in time, it was May 30th was the day that uh, was set aside for um, Decoration Day. And then when it got changed to Memorial Day in 1968, Congress passed the uh, that they wanted on last Monday to give a three-day holiday to the federal employees. Mm -hmm. So that's how it all came about in 1971 and became the Memorial Day ceremony. Yeah. So yeah. 
Now, as long as I've been in this community, uh, Lake Orion really treats Memorial Day with reverence. And so there's a full slate of activity uh, on Monday at 9 a.m. Uh, there's going to be a wreath ceremony and a little yeah. service uh, at East Lawn Cemetery on Orion Road. Mm -hmm. uh, so things will kick off at 9 a.m. that day. Uh, then there'll be, well, while that's going on, the newest event that's been added to the slate of events is the 5K. Do you want to talk about the 5K on Monday? I don't run in it, but I know <laughs> I'm usually there handing out medals to the awesome people that do run it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I think we count it, is it like the seventh year or something? Maybe it's the I should have looked it up. But I don't yeah, remember. I remember years. the first year though, it, it started, started downtown that ended mm -hmm. at the memorial mm -hmm. um <laughs> but there was a lot of hills that's what i heard but um yeah, you don't yeah. want runners crossing m24 no so, no yeah, that's no different. but it's it's you know it's always a really well attended um race there's still you can still register for that you know mm -hmm. there's a a link on uh township facebook page and um website and all of that stuff probably on the veterans memorial i'm not sure yeah not either yet. way no, yeah, okay. <laughs> so the start finish line is right by the Orion Center mm -hmm. near Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. Uh, the runners go out over the bridge there onto Pink Creek mm -hmm. Trail, head out on Pink, Pink Creek Trail, turn around and mm -hmm. come back to the finish line where yeah. they started. Uh, it's always a great turnout and like you said, people get medals at the finish and uh, and it acts as a fundraiser. That's yeah. the best part. It acts as a fundraiser for, for the, the memorial. memorial. It's really mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, so that as the 5K is winding down, there'll be another ceremony uh, in Children's Park. Pink Creek runs through Children's Park. Uh, so uh, the VFW American Legion, uh, they have a little ceremony where they throw a wreath into the water to memorialize those who lost their lives at sea. Uh, and then at 11 o'clock, we have the parade. And mm -hmm. so downtown Lake Orion comes down Flint Street, uh, makes a right on Broadway. Usually there's a little recognition right at the intersection where they mm -hmm. uh, do the honored veteran. Do you happen to know who the honored veteran is this the year? The veteran of the year this year is uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Wright. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. She's spoken at the ceremony She spoke at last year. I had her as a speaker for 9-11 um, or Patriot Day. Uh, this is a remarkable woman that was on Air Force One on 9-11 with yeah. President Bush. Uh, just, just a great person to talk to. Oh yeah, what, what an amazing history. Yeah, I was at the uh, Patriot Day ceremony when she talked about the things that transpired on 9-11 and imagine being on Air Force One, no, finding can't. out with the president what's happening no. uh, around the country and around the world. It was really amazing. So uh, well deserved that yes. she's gonna get recognized. That's yes. great. And she will be there at the memorial. She's doing the Pledge of Allegiance and helping with uh, putting the wreath at the at our, the foot of our uh, one of our monuments. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the person next to you there, she will be reading off some names of the veterans who have passed away this last year. So we we always do that every year too. Yeah, right? yeah. There's there's been a couple that I've known personally who were members of the VFW that we lost this past year it's uh it's you know these guys are getting up there and uh, it's, it's sad to see i would i kind of shook my head when i looked at between uh, the vfw and the american legion and lake orion and the american legion oxford the number of names this yeah. year it's, yeah. it's yeah jim mouse who uh has uh, been the chaplain for the vfw mm -hmm. he passed away a few months ago so uh you know their their ranks are aging and they want to see younger people uh, who have served to come in and, and sort of pick up that baton and mm -hmm. um, yeah let's hope they can get the young people to keep this tradition going. It, it's very hard in today's world though. I, I, when I was in the service I got out in 74 and there still wasn't a lot of outside activity you know the, our, uh, my parents were very big in our VFW in Plymouth and it just naturally you go to their you know and I was very active in the VFW down there but I didn't have a lot of extra things, you know. Kids today, uh, parents have kids, and mm -hmm. they got they're in three or four different sports at one time, and that. So it's very difficult for them to to uh, put out that extra. Well, I will tell you this: last weekend, Lee, my husband, and Gordon, my stepson, 
were in Albion all weekend with my father-in-law, who is now the post commander of the VFW there. Oh, wow. So they spent a whole weekend doing stuff there. Yeah. And I'm a member of that one as well. It was a present from my father-in-law. He mm. has me as a member there. My nice. Birth, yeah. So, awesome. we, so there's a whole lot of that going on at our house, trust me. <laughs> yeah, that's great, yeah. So the ceremony will kick off this Monday at one o'clock, usually runs about an hour or so, right? Just, and just uh, an hour, maybe a hair over. We you know, we know people gotta get back to their picnics and everything <laughs> because this weekend is the unofficial uh, start, start of summer, of summer yeah. and yes, the is. picnic snap. But uh, you know, I ask people uh, that you're coming to honor people that gave their lives to make sure that we're a free nation. So, you know, give them an hour of your time on, sure. the, on you know, come come out and uh, honor them and uh, then get back to your boating on the lake and, yeah, yeah. and barbecuing and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's plenty of room and water's provided, so uh, it's a really great ceremony. I'm there every year and it's just really great to see Lake Orient come out and support our, yes. our veterans and those who lost their lives, so. Bob, we will see you on Monday. Okay. And thanks for coming out. Really appreciate it. No problem. I'll come here anytime you need somebody to fill in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so, uh, as you probably know, the Wildwood mm -hmm. Concert Series is going to be kicking off soon yes. on June 13th with the North Oakland Concert Band. Uh, so let's take a look at a performance by the Killer Flamingos from last year's Wildwood Concert Series at the Pavilion uh, over at Civic Center Park there. Uh, and uh, check it out. And there's a giant concrete slab here, and there's a giant dance floor. So we're gonna see everyone come down and dance with us tonight, okay? Oh, don't you feel the fact? Just keep your eyes on me. I see you rolling back. She said, shut up and dance with me. This one it is my destiny. She said,
So yeah, what a great environment to see uh, live music is uh, Wildwood. And from what I understand, that Wildwood Pavilion is going to have concerts all, all summer long. Summer. Not just the township free concerts, right. but uh, the Orient Dot events. events. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, man, you could spend your whole summer you at could. Wildwood. Yeah. You really could. You really <laughs> could. It's a great place. And, you know, they keep building things out. Like, there's the pavilion now that you can sit under, have some food. Mm. Um, I That's told someone awesome. the other day I was going to practice doing somersaults down the side of the hill. Because it looks <laughs> like, I'm always like, that looks like a lot of fun. But, no, it's a great place. So, uh, as you probably know, the school year is winding down. Graduation's right mm. around the corner. We'll be there for graduation. And, of course, this, the high school sports season is winding down. Uh, so, Joey Tysick, who knows? Maybe this might be his last... Uh, sports roundup uh, of the season, but uh, here's the latest look at high school sports. Hello and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host Joey Tysick and today we're back as the spring sports season is coming down to the wire. We've got updates on girls soccer along with boys and girls lacrosse. The Lake Orion girls soccer team started off their season a little slow with a loss to Davison 1-2, then tying Berkeley 0-0 and followed by back-to-back -back one goal losses to Groves and Oxford. The nice thing is that they were close in each game, but they just came up a bit short. However, since April 30th, the girls have not lost a game. This was all kicked off by an 11-0 mercy over Farmington. They also were able to win all three of their games at the Petoskey Invitational beating Flint Powers 3-1, Clarkson 3-2, and Petoskey 3-1. After the trip to Petoskey, the team has had back-to-back -back shutouts against Notre Dame Prep 6-0 and Utica 3-0. The team will be playing Lapeer in their District 5 matchup on Thursday, May 23rd at Lapeer High School. Lapeer finished their season at 5-8-1, so it should be a good game for Lake Orion to possibly move on through the playoffs. We will keep you updated as the ladies prepare for their playoff run. The varsity girls lacrosse team has had another successful season as they only dropped two games all season long to make their record 12 and two. The two losses did come in back-to-back -back away games against Bloomfield Hills where they lost five to 18 and Novi where they lost eight to 13. After that, Lake Orion rattled off wins in the last six games of the season. The best thing about their season was that they didn't just beat every team by a lot. Lake Orion was also able to win a couple of close games, which shows just how much resilience this team has this year. They will begin their playoffs in round two of the Region 4 playoffs. They await the winner of Fenton and Howell. That first playoff match will be at Lake Orion High School on Wednesday at 6 p.m., so come out and support the Lady Dragons. The boys lacrosse team has also found great success once again this season. They are one of the top teams in the state and are expected to make a solid playoff run and could maybe even compete for the state title. Their record finished at 14-2 with both of the losses coming to two of the top teams in the state. The first loss was to Heartland where they lost the craziest game of the season, 13-14 in double overtime. The next loss came to Rockford who finished with just one loss on the season as Lake Orion fell 5-8. Most of their other games were blowouts or teams making a late push in the games. When Lake Orion's offense is cooking, it's almost impossible to stop as they just bombard teams with shots from all over the field, making it a nightmare for opposing goalies. They are the Region 5 number one seed, so they will get a first round bye and await the winner of Macomb, Dakota, who they beat earlier this season, and St. Clair. The game will be at Lake Orion High School on Thursday, May 23rd at 5.30 p.m. On the next episode, we will wrap up the sports season for the school year and see where the soccer, lacrosse, and even track teams finished off their season. Lake Orion has some opportunities to make some noise in these spring playoffs. Good luck and go Dragons! For past episodes of the Sports Update, head on over to orientontv.org and click the ONTV On Demand link. There you will find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local programming at its best. For even more Lake Orient sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orient Neighborhood Television. 
Also, make sure to catch all of our replays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m., along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, Joey. And coming up in a second, we got a little cooking segment coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, with summer coming, are, are you a big barbecuer? Do you like to cook yeah. outside? What What's yeah. your go-to when you cook outside? Um, Probably the steaks, right? Yeah. I don't like to cook them inside just because... We, I will, but I like steaks outside on the on the grill, mm. you know, and actually seafood probably. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I do like to. I have some cedar planks. I still do that cedar plank salmon thing. I don't know if it's like in style anymore, but I still do it. <laughs> yeah. I, what about I, you? What do I, you do? Well, I'm an apartment dweller. I'm not supposed to barbecue, but apparently that doesn't stop my neighbor who uh, barbecued right outside my apartment the other day and filled oh. my apartment full of smoke. Oh, so nice. that was a lot of fun. Lovely. Um, but no, I usually get invited to barbecues mm -hmm. and that's always a lot of fun. And, you know, I love a good barbecue chicken or yeah. maybe a kebab on the grill, you know, mm. that sort of stuff. That's what I enjoy. Yeah. And of course, burgers and dogs. You can't go no. wrong with that. No, you can't. <laughs> but in my family, they call them mom burgers. Mm-hmm because I put like a little pad of butter in the middle. Yeah. And then it, yeah, anyway. Ah. Uh, Make the bomber. That's when the little ones go, let's go to McDonald's. And you're like, we got McDonald's at home. And you throw them <laughs> on the We got McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. McDonald's. <laughs> I love that. Green pepper thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh. speaking of cooking, we recently had uh, one of our volunteers, Monique Maxim, in the studio, and she whipped up some firecracker shrimp appetizers. Mm. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome to ONTV Cooking. I'm your host Monique Maxim and today we're doing a show called Summer Sparklers in the spirit of our Dragon on the Lake fireworks that we have every year. So I want to get started with what I call my firecracker shrimp and I was lucky enough to have this in a place called Loss O Loss. It was at a restaurant called YOLO and this is what I call my firecracker, firecracker shrimp. This is what I call my firecracker shrimp, so I'm going to remake that for you now. Now, I purchased this avocado mash at our local store. You're welcome to take avocados and mash them by hand, but for the sake of um, I've opened many avocados and have them be brown and disappointing for you, so I want it to be beautiful today. So I picked up this avocado mash, and it's easy way for you to get started too. So this avocado mash is easily available. And then just go ahead and poke in a couple of chips around the side. I serve chips extra on the side, but I just poke a few chips in here. And when I was served this, they had a metal... Um, container and a uh, piece of paper in there but I knew I had these cups at home for you so I wanted to present it this way for you and then I just take a dozen shrimp you know like about six shrimp these are called firecracker shrimp and you can do any kind of shrimp that you want these are seasoned with some little bit of red pepper and some bay seasoning and that so I put about a half a dozen shrimp in there and then I put the secret touch there I'm gonna break this chip so it'll fit in there a little bit better for me I take a little bit of this Oaxaca cheese and so I put the Oaxaca cheese just a little pinch of that on the side there and there you have your firecracker shrimp and once you pull your chip out of there you'll have a delicious bit of that avocado on there. So let me just whip up a second one for you and show you just how fast it can be. So just add your avocado mash, tuck a couple of your cute little chips around there, add your shrimp that's seasoned with your chili and bay, a little bit of red pepper, whatever seasoning you like. These have a little bit of a kick to them, but you can have them as spicy or as mild as you like. If you have big shrimp, you can just put a few, littler shrimp, tuck in a few more, and then again, finish off with this Oaxaca cheese, which is really cool. 
melts up really nice on top of that shrimp there. And the final thing for our firecracker shrimp appetizer is we're gonna add just a little pinch of cilantro on top there. And these are gonna be delicious. They're beautiful. Your guests are gonna love them. All right, I'm getting hungry. I don't right. know about you. I am. It's <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm not. I'm not a huge seafood person, but I'll eat mm -hmm. it occasionally. But I don't crave it. I think if if I have any seafood, it's either like freshwater fish or maybe some breaded shrimp or something like that. Mm -hmm. What's What's your go-to? Uh, honestly, I, oh, oh, I like. I'm a salmon person, but I'll eat. I like eat, smoked salmon. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think. I, but I didn't like seafood until. Um, I was, you know, in my 30s, and I took a trip to Boston. Oh, yeah. And that changed my whole world. <laughs> well, it's so fresh. Like, yeah. seafood in Boston is a little different than seafood in Michigan. I True. Mean, unless, I mean, you can get freshwater fish yeah. here in Michigan. But I remember going to Boston, and I asked the waitress, I said, because we were right in the bay there, and I said, uh, I said, what do you recommend to someone who doesn't normally eat seafood? And she goes, Try the lobster mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. And it was out of this world. Yeah. It was one of the best things I've ever eaten. Yeah. I never tried mussels until they, uh, then I was there, and they brought the bag of mussels. Mm -hmm. They steam it in the bag, and they just kind of throw it on your table. <laughs> and they say, there you go. And you're like, I'm on my own. So here we go. Wow. Yeah, cool. Ah, so wow. good. Right out of the water. Man. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Uh, next up. Uh, we had, everyone knows Joanne Van Tassel. She has been a yeah. fixture in this community as long as I've been here. And long before that, she's been Orient Township Supervisor. She's been Village Manager. Yeah. And I got to say this publicly, she has been one of the strongest supporters of ON TV. Yes. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people out there know that we're a nonprofit organization and we get funded by cable revenue. And way back in the mid 80s, Joanne Van Tassel recognized the value of public access in the community and made sure that that funding went toward community access. And here we are 30 plus years later, almost 40 years later, and Joanne Van Tassel was a big reason for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we recently had her in the studio and had her talk about uh, her role here in the community. And uh, so let's take a look at this clip featuring uh, Joanne Van Tassel. Don't you just love it when people say, remember when? And then you're able to share some of your stories and tell everyone about the good old days and some of the amazing things that you were a part of. Well, today we're going to remember when Joanne Van Tassel was a part of all these amazing development opportunities in the township, leadership opportunities, volunteer opportunities. We're going to enjoy a program that helps you know Joanne Van Tassel from a unique and new perspective. I'm Penny Schultz. Enjoy Remember When. It is so good to have you here, Joanne. Yep. Thank you for the invitation. I know that you're the first guest on this program, but you've also given me some great ideas for other people that we can interview as time goes on with Remember When. You served as supervisor in Orient Township for three and a half terms, but before you served, you had a long history. Your family had a long history with the community, dating all the way back from the 1940s. Can you tell us a little bit about that time? Well, when I was growing up, right after, as I call it, the war, my folks belonged at Indianwood and played golf. And of course, we couldn't, they couldn't leave three kids at home, so the three kids came along. Myself, a younger sister, and a younger brother. Um, the first year or two, we played in what, at that time, was tennis courts, except there was no net or anything like that, and we just, played around and there were folks who belonged to Indianwood who lived in the area or we'd go over to their houses like uh, the Kings and they lived on Bellevue Island and uh, sometimes we'd go swimming and things like that. We always had a great time but after a couple of years 
I learned it was more profitable to caddy, so I caddied for women. Oh. So I know the old course at Indianwood, you could not lose me on that course if you tried. You could blindfold me, turn me around, drive me out, drop me somewhere, and I'd know exactly where I was and which hole we were on and, and so on. So, uh, no, I always enjoyed that. Uh, when we were members, the Michigan Open was played there. Yes. Uh, Chuck Harbert was a, uh, a Michigan golfer who won the Open a couple of times, and uh, then later on, um, after my mother hurt her foot, she stopped playing golf, and so we weren't at Indianwood anymore. But uh, when Stan Aldridge came and bought the course and mm -hmm. changed things, uh, I was able to tell him a couple of things about what was what and, and so on. And um, The rich history and was able to work both women's opens and uh, then was somewhat involved a little bit in the senior men's uh, open that was held there back in um, 2012. That was pretty exciting. Your mother golfed with my grandmother, Grace Rubelman. That's right. Yeah, your mom was a pretty good golfer, if I've heard the stories yep. right. Yeah, yep. Indianwood had some special memories for you and your family. Yes. And you also moved to the area. Your mom moved out here. When do you remember when you moved out? January 20th, 1974. And you're on Lake Voorhees? Yes. It's a beautiful home that you have there. Thank you. It's pretty special memories to be able to come and visit and vacation here, but then to live here and move here. You immediately got involved in community service. I have always been involved in politics, as I tell people, it was started in high school, but I became an elected precinct delegate during the first Nixon campaign. Wow. That's 1960 when he ran against JFK. Uh, and being involved, uh, I've been a delegate to more county conventions and state conventions than I can count. I was a delegate to the National Convention in 1980 in Detroit when the Republicans nominated Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've got more political stories that could take, you know, days to tell, so. So yeah, you can see more of that program on our channel. Our, uh, our program schedule is on our website, orionontv.org. Uh, but yeah, what a pillar of this community and yes. has, has had her hands in so many things uh, that not only did she make happen here in the community, but things that she wouldn't allow to happen, oh, yeah. uh, like the prison. the prison. She takes great pride in the no. fact that she helped pre prevent a prison from being built here yeah. in Orient Township. She so. told that story at the, I think that was one of the stories that she told at the bridge dedication. Yeah, yeah. I remember hearing her talk about that. Yeah. It's the first so. time I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. She's an incredible it's lady. Nice that they have that bridge named after her, and uh, who knows? Maybe they'll erect a statue in her honor at some point. We'll <laughs> see. I'll I'll contribute to that. We'll so. put it in one of the roundabouts. <laughs> there you go. That would be awesome. By the fountain there, that would be really cool. Uh, our last segment we're going to show you today. Uh, Becky put together uh, this week's uh, ONTV Quick Hits, which gives you an idea of some of the events that are going to be coming up over the next week or two. So, take it away. Lots of great events happening in Lake Orient on Memorial Day. The day begins with the 8th Annual Orient Veterans Memorial Day Run. The run will begin at Children's Park in downtown and runners have the choice of a 5K or 5 mile race. Register ahead of time at eastsideracing.com. Day of check will take place near the start line at 8 a.m. The day continues with the Memorial Day Parade in downtown Lake Orient. The parade begins at 11 a.m. Viewers are invited to line up along Flint and Broadway streets to watch this wonderful event. At 1 o'clock, the Memorial Day ceremony will be taking place. Orient residents are invited to honor those who have died in service to our nation. The ceremony will take place at the Orient Veterans Memorial located at 532 South Broadway Street. Mark your calendar, the Orient Center will be hosting a variety of events on Saturday, June 1st. Stop by for the outdoor garage sale along with the Antique Toy and Comic Expo and Game and Puzzle Spot. All the events begin at 9 a.m. For more information, visit orientparks.com. 
while it looks like it's going to feel a lot like summer this week, Wednesday's forecast is calling for partly cloudy skies with a high of 83 and low 59. Partly cloudy again on Thursday with a high of 80 and low 54. Mostly sunny on Friday with a high of 78 and low 55. Partly cloudy skies on Saturday with a high of 78 and low 58. And scattered thunderstorms on Sunday with a high of 81 and low 60. Well, that's it for this week's ON TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So, all right, so lots of activity uh, happening here in Lake Orion. Uh, more stuff coming up. Uh, I just, uh, oh, <laughs> rushing us out of here with the credits. Um, <laughs> one thing that's coming up, I was just trying to look up the date. I don't have it at my fingertips, but um, you may or may not know that uh, Lake Orion Superintendent Ben Kirby is going to be going back yeah. to his roots in, the, I think, the Grand Rapids area, is it? And um and so the superintendent spot is going to be uh filled by the district at some point um, but they're going to be having a farewell party for ben kirby at the school administration building in a, a week or two so you mm. can find that information on facebook if you want to say goodbye to uh, ben kirby uh what else i mentioned earlier that graduation's just uh, a week or so away that's mm -hmm. going to be at pine knob we'll have our equipment there and that reminds me you know what i when i first came out to this community uh we didn't have a big portable studio yet uh mm. so i went to i can't remember if it was dte or meadowbrook at the time but i i shot video of the graduation ceremony uh lake orion's graduation ceremony in 1994 i believe it was so 30 years ago wow i'm gonna have to share those highlights on Facebook because it's it's amazing to think that those kids now are uh -huh. in their 40. <laughs> I know. Well, my oldest just turned 31. Oh my and god. And that 2011 graduation was at Meadowbrook. Remember that? Was it Meadowbrook? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, that was Yeah, it was yeah, it only I don't want to say recently, but it went over to yeah. DTE, which is back to Pine Knob. So yeah, yeah so that's uh, exciting stuff coming up. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about I kind of hate to end on a down note but uh, with the few minutes we have left on the program I wanted to kind of pay tribute to one of our longtime hosts uh, we did a show uh, here for a number of years called Community Corner mm -hmm. and that actually started at my previous job uh, I worked for CMN TV in Troy and uh, more than 15 years ago or so we were approached um, by an organization, I think they were called Community Living Services, and they asked me to teach video production to special needs people. And at first I kind of panicked. I'm like, I, I don't have any experience. I, I don't have a, you know, a certification right. to work with. And they, they're like, you don't have to do anything special. Just do what you always do. Right. And so we offered a class to the special needs community. And it, for me personally, it was life changing. It was just amazing. I, I learned so much. Well, of that group, there were three guys, uh, Ryan, Aaron, and David who had so much fun in the class, they took it a second time, and then they wanted to produce a show. And I said, what kind of show do you want to produce? And they said, we want to be like Karen Drew, do investigative <laughs> journalism. And I said, okay, Hello. slow your roll. I said, let's do a talk show. And so they started doing a talk show. The three of them would interview a guest, and usually the guest was someone who had an impact on their life. Yeah. Mentors, teachers, coaches, employers. Uh, and it was great. And they did a show every month for more than a decade. We celebrated their hundredth show uh, right here at ON TV. Um, well, just yesterday, I got a call from someone who said that one of the hosts of the show, David DeWitt Taylor, passed away in March. I only just found out oh, yesterday. Wow. Uh, and that was devastating news because these guys were special. They were really amazing, funny guys, just really awesome. And the only reason the show ceased production here at Owen TV was because of COVID. COVID oh. kind of brought everything to an end and then we were never able to get them back here in the studio. But I would see David occasionally, he would DJ. He was the dazzle do DJ guy <laughs> when they would have the, uh, the dances over at the Orient Center. So every once in a while, I'd hear music coming from over there and I'd go over and say hi to him. And, uh, Unfortunately, I got the bad news yesterday that he passed away. So um, there was no funeral, there was no memorial, but the call that I received yesterday was to tell me that they're gonna be uh, celebrating David's life at Dutton Farm 
on June 11th. And so I'm going to mm. put together a tribute video and I'll go over there with my camera and I'll cover the event uh, for our newscast. But mm. uh, I'm glad I got that phone call and we're going to be able to uh, celebrate David's life. And I just want to express my condolences to his, his family and his friends and his community corner co-host. And uh, boy, he's, he's going to be missed. So. Yeah. On that note, unless you have anything to add, we're going to wrap up this episode of Orient Today, and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks.